Originally, we started the center as Institute for Disaster Research in 1970, when the Lubbock tornado came through here. This was a level large tornado, very large tornado. If a very intense tornado occurs, you want to save the lives of people. The state of Texas is somewhat on the edge of what's thought of as Tornado Alley. There are areas of the country where the the risks are much higher, yet some of the most severe tornadoes we have seen have been in Texas. The tornado in 1970 was one of the strongest ones that we've seen. It did a lot of damage. It killed 26 people. This is the restaurant where I was uh, uh, residing when the tornado uh, hit Lubbock on May the 11th of 1970. That particular day was not a very exciting day. No, no one had forecast any storms. So it was really late afternoon when the weather service first started thinking about the possibility of some severe storms. I had sort of come into the restaurant uh, to get out of the storm and was caught there when the, when the storm occurred. The hail was extremely loud when we could hear it. And then the hail stopped entirely, and there was just dead silence. I was on my way to look out and see what happened, and uh, before I could get to the door, uh, the thing hit, and I was huddled under a, a bench right inside the, the main door here when the, when the storm hit. Tornado is, is a vortex, so it creates a high winds. And at that time, the myth was that the tornado will explode the buildings because of the pressure change, but they're really damaged by wind. science and engineering research center here. Had a young faculty poised to do research, but had little going. We realized the, both the seriousness of it as well as the opportunity, because we had a, a lot of damaged buildings in Lubbock. So we wanted to record how the building performed, how they failed, what was the mode of collapse, what kind of materials did better than the other type of materials, so like wood, concrete, uh, concrete block, etc. So that really helped us to define is how to design for a tornado, what to expect, so that uh, communities don't have to suffer. Well, this particular room is what we call a debris impact facility. And one of the things that we have found, in, particularly in tornadoes, that there is a lot of debris from a broken buildings, if you want to call it. The building's roof fall apart and pieces of two by four, pieces of two by six fly around. Our research has been primarily in assisting companies that are trying to build shelters. Companies can bring up wall or a door, and we simply subject it to debris impacts to see whether it will resist. We used about a 14-foot two before, traveling at 100 miles an hour. That's a very lethal impact. Three, two, one. Our goal was to design for shelter so people can survive in case of a tornado. In our post-storm documentations, and we've done many, even when a house is totally destroyed, some small part of the building is still standing. So that was the birth of the idea of an above-ground storm shelter. This model was developed simply to demonstrate some of the things that we can do to reduce the damage to buildings. And then, of course, we would advocate building a storm shelter, and this is a small model of a storm shelter uh, that, that would provide protection for the uh, family that lived here. I think we have gone far beyond the research stage in, in actually implementing results and making an impact through the building codes, through the standards. But much can yet be done in where we build, how we build, to reduce the long-term effects. 
Our emphasis is shifting somewhat now to wind energy. It's a unique program. There is no other program of a multidisciplinary of this nature anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world. We need atmospheric science. We need engineering because we want to live with that wind. We want to generate electricity using some other form of energy. And wind is available, particularly in the state of Texas. We cannot avoid it, and it will always be there. We can't kill the hurricane. They're going to be there anyway. Their tornadoes are going to be there. And so how to live with the wind, make it useful as far as possible, and reduce the detrimental effect to the extent we can. If we can do that, we have, we have done our job. I think as far as disasters go uh, in Lubbock, Texas, that would have to be at or very near the top of the list. And certainly, we've had nothing like that uh, since. It's not something you forget. It's been uh, 36 years ago. And uh, I was a young man then, and I'm an old man now, but I'll never forget that experience. <laughs>